Anyway, thanks for coming, guys. Um, uh, really appreciate your time. What we'll do is we'll just uh, make a quick statement of the announcement. Uh, and I wanted to introduce you to Tim Piper and to Craig Ralston, both from Bendigo Bank, on the back of showing you a little bit about what they're doing with us. Um, they're available for a quick chat, and then uh, I'll step aside and then come back in for whatever you want from me, which might be beyond Bendigo announcements, we'll see. Um, so we're really, really pleased today to be able to announce a, a three-year deal with Bendigo that's um, at our premier partner level um, and it reflects a very significant investment into our club and our club into Bendigo who are aiming, and I think you'll see succeeding around Adelaide at the moment and South Australia generally, to be the customer focused bank uh, in, in our state. You've seen the presence and for them to now attach themselves alongside our club is fantastic for us. Um, a little bit of confusion yesterday about what that meant as the jungle drums went around. It doesn't mean being up on our training facility. Uh, the red signs will certainly come down, but the attachment with these guys is at a community level, it's in and around the bowl at Adelaide Oval, and it's in a number of other ways, including being our banker, for which we're delighted. But a really key part of this uh, uh, association is reflected in our state league jumper. And what I wanted to show you today was, for the first time, it in all of its livery. Um, I think you know that Toyota are on the front, uh, and I think you know that Foodland are on the shorts. And both of those are 23-year partners, uh, and you know the sort of level we're talking about. And I want you to understand this, that Bendigo Bank, who are on the back, Craig, uh, in such a prominent fashion, gives you an idea about, one, their commitment to community in South Australia with our State League team, and secondly, uh, how, how the investment looks in our club alongside Toyota and Foodland. So we're really delighted. These are actually they're pretty bloody good blokes as well at the same time. Uh, yeah, look, from our point of view, we're absolutely rapt to be partnering up with the Crows for, for a three-year opportunity. Um, our, our businesses have been built on feeding into the prosperity of communities uh, in which we operate and exist. Um, we've got a really strong history in South Australia. We've been around for over 100 and 130 years. So we started uh, a long time ago in this state. Uh, and really one of the things that sets us apart is to, is to look for shared value and, uh, and shared outcomes in the communities that we exist. Uh, and really we just thought uh, the Crows being the team for all South Australians and us being, having an aspiration of being the bank for all South Australians, we just felt the partnership was right. Um, but importantly, we looked at what the Crows are all about and, and what they looked to deliver to their members and supporters. Uh, and it absolutely aligned to our objectives for our customers and staff and community partners. So, uh, couldn't be happier to be associated and involved. We've had a really uh, extraordinary um, morning of support and interest from our staff. They're over the moon uh, and no doubt that will reflect uh, also in our customers and, and likewise I think to help build a strong uh, Adelaide football club that's going to be fantastic for, for the Crows and, and for the wider South Australian community. So we're over the moon. So just from an organisational perspective, uh, first of all to the Adelaide Crows, um, we have been working on this, obviously you guys found out about it recently, um, but we've been working on it for a couple of months and it's been a terrific uh, partnership, um, probably a little bit different to a normal sponsorship. What we've been working with the Crows about is how do we help the communities that we're working in and what the Crows are, are involved in as well. So it's been a, a different focus. I think that's reflected by the fact that we're on the SANFL uh, Guernsey, not Jersey, <laughs> Guernsey. Um, but that's really important to us because that's the local community and we and what we are seeking to, well, what we do stand for is investing in communities. Again, a successful community means that our bank will be successful and we've certainly been presenting that argument or that view to the community in South Australia for the last couple of weeks since we've opened our $150 million building in the, in the centre of Adelaide. It is about investing in South Australia. This is just another example of it for us. Craig, last year you sort of had the association, we've got the association with the power and, and food bank. You yep. mentioned the, the bank for all South Australians, I mean, there's no bias between footy clubs then? No, absolutely not. I suppose for us we see that, I guess, um, to see South Australia prosper is one of our high level objectives and so we think the Crows just is such an important part of that when it comes to community spirit and confidence uh, and that cascades through both um, general sentiment of people living in South Australia but also business. 
Um, so for us, um, we think to have two really strong football teams in South Australia is, would be an absolutely wonderful outcome, um, hence having partnerships with both. And getting your um, name on the back of the SNFL State, Kenzie was a bit of a target of yours? Well, look, when we, when we sat down with the Crows, we just thought um, there's going to be such interest in the sample, uh, and it does really represent a lot of grassroots community football as well. So for us, um, just a no-brainer and something we're just thrilled to have. I don't think that's the state Guernsey, by the way. But, but we're proud to be on the back of the, uh, the reserve Guernsey of, of, of the Crows. How did, <laughs> honestly, how did two bankers start talking about Guernseys? <laughs> there, hasn't, there hasn't been too many people prepared to hold that up for us, but uh, that's OK. The only thing I have to... Well, perhaps on the back of that um, uh, is beyond the community angle, which is very real, both in the State League jumper um, and in the other efforts with us. I mean, in the end, it's about Bendigo growing their business in South Australia. And we're very confident that we can help them do that. So, uh, you know, the, the partnership looms as being something pretty special, both at uh, State League level and AFL level. So we're delighted with it. It's great. Did you have anything else you wanted to it's deal with? A, a pretty uh, close call on what sort of Guernsey design you went with? Or? A close call between what and what? I think they were Oh yeah. No, well, it's interesting because uh, we all have this, these varying views, but I think it's fair to say, DB, that uh, this one, this one got um, a resounding tick from almost everyone internally. And when we tested it externally, same sort of thing. So it actually was a standout. Fans like traditional strips, what do you, what do you sort of make about them? They obviously you pick one, so. Well, it's a traditional strip, and I think there's a bit in that. Um, you know, the state league competition is over 100 years old. Um, we, as we've tried to make the point recently, were derived from the state league competition. And so we wanted to be traditional with what we presented. And um, I think it's smart, stylised, um, but it got a traditional element to it as well. So hopefully everyone agrees. Can we hopefully we can win some games in it. Can we just give a bit of an update on the licence and the agreement? Are you confident it'll all be done before the start of the season? Yeah, look, I don't... I am, but at the same time, don't want to elaborate on where it's at. It feels like it's been going forever, and I understand that. Um, uh, the inevitable question is um, surrounding valuations, is surrounding the when part. I think the best thing for us to do at the moment is just to sit tight, because sometime soon it will be resolved. But the best thing, I think the best message to land at the moment is that People will wonder why it's taken so long. You know, it's been 18 months, perhaps even nearly two years in the making we've been talking about this. Um, the, the shortest answer for people to understand is this, is that the licences themselves are intertwined with a whole range of other agreements, including um, our licence to occupy at Adelaide Oval, uh, our licence to occupy for the next 35, 40 years here, uh, our new constitution, the AFL's new licence to occupy with Sandful through AOSMA. So the short thing is there are 13 different agreements that have needed to be brought together. And every time you make an adjustment to one, it has a knock-on effect. And the licences are just part of that. So um, that's why it's taken so long. And I think it's probably important for people to understand that it hasn't been any lack of drive or care to get it done. It's just been a very complicated process, but we're really close. Are you happy with the value of your license? I'll talk to you about the valuation when we when when the deal's done. Yeah. And um, just on, uh, there's been a bit of chatter that St Kilda have been um, poaching yourself. Can you Has shed it? any light on that? Um, well, it's not right. Uh, as he shuffles in his chair, it's not right. <laughs> but uh, even if it were, you know that I wouldn't talk about it. I mean, the reality for me is that. Um, uh, this club's shown me enormous loyalty and support, and I'm not going to nick off in, within five minutes of that. Uh, to coin a phrase, there's a fair bit of unfinished business here, and, and that's in particular on field, where I think we're in fantastic shape, and, uh, and the capacity for us to do some really special things over the next couple of years is something that I definitely want to see through. So, you know, let the jungle drums talk, uh, bang away, but uh, I'll be here. How, how much longer can you see yourself working with the Adelaide Crow? Uh, we'll see. You know the old saying, how long's a piece of string? I've been around this caper long enough to know that you you just don't bank anything. Been to go bank anything. But uh, but but what what you do do is you just crack in every day and give it your best shot and uh, that's what I'm about at the moment. Speaking about the on-field stuff, 
stuff just training just training before Taylor Walker look pretty good out there. Yeah, he's great. And, and Levy, how much of a boost is it from an organisational point of view to see you guys? He's in good nick, isn't he? He's got bigger arms than me. He's um, he uh, it's a great boost to everyone that he's he, he's just about ready. And the old adage with those knee reconstructions is once they are ready, you give them some time. And I think Brenton articulated that really well the other day by saying, you know, he'll be the, the key determinant once he thinks he's ready and we can sign off on that from an orthopod point of view, a club doctor point of view, a senior coach point of view, he's away. But gee, he looks good. He looks really, really good. There's a lot of talk about free agency this year. Do the Crows have a bit of money to splash around? Um, well, n n yes and no. Yes, depending on... Uh, how we can renew into next year. So it's too early. I think the best answer is it's too early, potentially, depending on how we recontract into next year um, and what our list changes look like late in the year. But we would, we would be very aggressively pursuing the free agency market, given where we've been in the last couple of years. And you've seen that already with uh, the two established players that we brought in. Um, and we'll be trying very hard to replicate that this year. Say that the training facility wouldn't be renamed? Or Would not, no. There are others that we've got in the pipeline for that. That might be weeks away.